ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Positive Wrestling Podcast. My name is Stephen Baker, aka Leon, and as you can see, I have this beautiful Positive Wrestling Podcast shirt, and I have this beautiful Positive Wrestling Podcast mug, uh, shameless plug, um, got as a gift from Mr. Alex Watt, Real Kilowatt, double L, double T. Um, you can find him on Twitter, all that other fun stuff. But today, that's not what this is about. Today, I have what might be, I have to say, I can't say my favorite guest, but I can say that he is 100% my biggest foil I've ever had in wrestling. Uh, he's always been the Batman to my Joker, uh, for what it seems. We've wrestled, uh, I can't even count how many times, and uh, for good reason. And I'm sure you'll hear a lot of those stories. But ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, the metahuman supervillain, insane Dick Lane. It is I, Dick Lane. <laughs> How's it going, homie? What's going on, man? <laughs> Um, dude, I'm, I'm really happy to have you on here. Uh, you, so I've, I've been waiting to obviously get a little more local with some of the guys who I'm going to bring in, you know, try to get a little more reach out, but like, uh, you were the first person that I thought about bringing on when it came to actual local, local people. Um, I am the, I am the most localist dude. Yes. You yes. are in fact, the most localist dude. He is, if we're, if we're talking, uh, local, local wrestlers, this man has it down pat because he is in every promotion you will see from this 40 mile radius and this 40 mile radius. <laughs> Owns it, man. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Bob talks about getting in the car and taking the drive. That ain't me. That's not me, Dick Lane. <laughs> no, Dick. Dick Lane will hop on his on his bicycle and take a quick two mile ride down the road for a wrestling show. But yes. uh, but no, man. I, I'm really happy to have you on here. Uh, we have a lot of history. A lot of history in the short time that uh, we've pretty much short time. It's been almost four years now, actually. Jesus Christ. But like yeah. four years that I've been running myself. Uh, we've had a lot of history. A lot of feuds. Uh, a lot of lot of battles, including some in the streets of Providence, which was phenomenal. Um, oh, yeah. oh yeah. So you know what? I want to get right off the bat, man. I'm just going to start with uh, getting to your origins, though, because people know mine. How did Dick Lane come about? What started Dick Lane? Like, where the? I mean, I know your name is Richard Lane, but tell um, us the character. How I got into the business? Yeah, man. Uh, I was at an NCW show. Uh, as we were just talking about, I literally lived next to the building that NCW was running out of, talking about local. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the show. Uh, I went with my good friend, Alan, who went on to become Dr. Cobblepot. We bumped oh. into T. Phoenix, uh, and he told us that he was starting training. JT Dunn was running a class at the chop shop, and we went down, and that's just how it started. I never left. You know, you talk about Dr. Cobblepot. I actually, I mean, not to say I ever forget about Cobblepot, because I know that's where you were made, was in this laboratory, obviously. Yep. But um, you and Alan have been friends, I assume, like you said, before wrestling was even a thing. How how cool yeah. was it to have Alan in your corner as, like, you know, your, your second and vice versa, like, just having each other there? Was that cool for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been, we were friends since first grade. Uh, we hung out all through high school. We did all types of like home movie jackass type stuff together mm -hmm. our entire lives, backyard wrestling our entire lives. Uh, so this was just the next logical step. We'd always loved wrestling and we'd always been involved with trying to do cool stuff together like that. So, yeah, it was just the next thing that we got into. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, so like obviously, you know, you guys being such close friends uh, makes it a lot easier to figure out what you want to do. Well, how did the whole like super villain and like, mad scientist thing come to be more or less you know what i mean like you and alan how did that turn out to be the characters you guys decided to go with um so jt dunn actually pitched the idea for the dr cobblepot character and he was more of just like a shysty businessman kind of like a uh like a snake sales snake oil salesman kind yeah of okay yeah exactly exactly and then from there when i made my debut i was like oh i'll be like some sort of science fiction creature. And then those two gimmicks kind of melded together and he became more of a mad scientist and I became more of his creature type of a gimmick sort of thing. Okay. Now, when you guys, obviously, I know Alan moved away quite some time ago. Um, actually, pretty much right right around when I started, I'm pretty sure he was on his way out, like towards like, I'm actually thinking he might have already been gone when I came in. But um, I got to know him a little bit because he comes back here and there and like really good dude. Um, when he left, did that kind of put like any damper on what you were doing or did you feel like that gave you your time to shine? Because honestly, for everyone that doesn't know, and I'm going to do it right now, Dick Lane is over as fuck. So like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm over with the people that know me. No, but yeah, that did, that did 
hurt me a little bit because I had this idea that my whole gimmick was completely dependent upon him. So he would, so when I first started in RWA, he would like come out with me and he was the one cutting the promos and I was just the one in the ring bumping around. So when he left, I was kind of like, Oh, what am I going to do? Is this going to be able to work? Uh, but luckily I had that RWA crew to, right. to back me up and tell me and, and to keep me motivated. And yeah, it just kind of, it was like taking the training wheels off kind of. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I figured it would be similar to. Cause like, I mean, anyone who knows, like, obviously you've been in, in uh, quite a few tag teams with people, you know, you got judge, uh, you guys are, uh, what is it? Laws of science. Yeah. Um, you have, you know, you and Sean leader, it's the, uh, the magic show. Yep. Medicine magic show. Um, you, you've definitely had uh, quite a few tag teams that you've worked through turtles in time included with a stable, things like that. But like, I've definitely, and I'm sure most people who know you can definitely say you, you thrive as a singles competitor. I mean, uh, you have, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of charisma and, uh, and it's the best part is it's not really so much when it comes down to the microphone, it comes down to your in-ring mannerisms, the way you move around, like even the yeah. step in the beginning, like all that stuff gets people going, man. And, uh, you know, what do you think? Do you think you prefer, do you prefer being a tag team or do you prefer being a singles guy? Um, I definitely prefer singles. Yeah. Uh, just because I get to do everything that I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, when you, when you are splitting up the time to get your stuff in between four people, you just get less stuff in and that's, it is what it is. There's a whole different art to being in a tag team than singles. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I like to be able to take my time and really teach people the character every time that I'm in the ring. You know what I mean? And no, it's harder to do with the tag team. Now, I mean, with, you know, talking about that with COVID and everything going on, I know it's obviously been hard for anyone who wrestles to actually go out and wrestle. Um, I know you've had your select bookings. I know I've had my bookings as well. Um, how have, how's that, how's COVID treated your, you know, I mean, your momentum, honestly. Um, yeah. I, I really, especially with the loss of the chop shop, you yeah. had so the the pandemic happened but i was still going to the shop every week to bump around at the uh the brick house baker class and yep. stuff like that and then a few months into the pandemic the the chop shop closed so i lost that uh so that was really tough um uh, luckily i had been going up and bumping around and doing shows with waw Every uh, every weekend I have available, and I know that those guys uh, kind of have a bad view upon their promotion and what they do up there. But they're all great guys, and it's been a pleasure to be able to get into a ring. And so they've given me that. No, absolutely. You know, I mean, that's one thing I've always said about you since the day that I at least got to like started to really know you is I respect that you aren't in it for. Uh, you're not like a fame hog. Like you obviously have your moments when you're online and stuff. You're like, Dick Lane's the best. Dick Lane is over. But like, I know that that's, you know, that's just you being, you know, having your fun and doing whatever. But like, you've always been really humble about like the people around you. Is like, you know, like you always just say, you've always told me like, I just want to wrestle with my friends and have fun. And that's really cool to me. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, especially people who are trying to make careers out of it are like, you know, they're so cutthroat and this and that, like the egotistical stuff. I mean, like I even said, I've said to plenty of people before, myself included, for there was like a time frame where I was like, I didn't even know who the hell I was. And uh, it just kind of turned into what the hell am I thinking? And like people like you, honest to God, are reasons why I finally kind of like caught myself. I'm like, I can't be this guy when I'm acting like this. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, I mean, everybody, everybody gets caught up in wrestling where yeah. they're, trying to get to that next step and they're striving and they're doing everything that they can to get either that next booking or that better spot on whatever show they're on. But you got to remember that before we're wrestlers, we're people, you know yeah. what I mean? And you got to treat people with respect, even if they are goofs or even if they're not that great, <laughs> you got to be respectful to people. You know what I mean, man? Like oh, absolutely. Every, everybody gets into the ring and gets involved with wrestling because they love wrestling just like everybody else there's nobody would be here if they didn't love wrestling so it's like there's no need to be disrespectful to people or to look down upon people yeah. you can you can 
you can properly analyze people and be like, oh, this guy's not that great at this. This guy uh, could be better at this, whatever. That's fine. That's normal. But you can't just completely discredit somebody or treat somebody like garbage because everybody's a wrestling fan. We're people before we're wrestlers. You know what I mean? No, nah, man. You know what? And you're, you're absolutely right. Like I, like I'm saying, just I'm not going to stay too long on this, obviously. But I mean, that was my. Uh, I, I used to have people, especially when I first came in, say, you know, don't let your real life get away from your wrestling life, and vice versa. Like you need to make that line because if you make that the same thing, you're going to realize how big of a problem that is. And for the longest time, and I've even said this to people, like I did, I didn't know who Stephen Baker was anymore. I was only King Leon. You know what I mean? And like, and it turned into its own problem in my own like real life too. So I completely understand what you're saying and you're not wrong by any stretch of the imagination. Um, before we get on to more wrestling stuff, I do want to, I, I want to bring into uh, your personal life. If you don't mind, uh, I, we, a lot of us know uh, who know you, you're having a little baby, huh, man? Yes. Coming you... this, this June, there will be a young female version of Dick Lane coming. Oh, cool. A Richard S. Lane or something. Yeah. Richard S. Yeah. Uh, are you excited? Are you scared? Like, I mean, let's, you know, get, get, get a little behind the curtain here for you. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, it's very frightening. Yeah. If you've never had a child before yeah. uh, to know what to expect. And uh, I'm trying my best to save money and get my house prepared for baby stuff. And I, I'm ar- I have already have like a pile of uh, baby goods that people have been sending us through the registry and stuff so yeah it's uh it's nerve-wracking but yeah. i i i feel ready for it you know what i mean i emotionally i'm very ready for it financially maybe not <laughs> <laughs> dude i promise you none of us are in financially ready for anything ever so you're you're fucking fine if that's the case well either way uh just i wanted to jump off track real quick before we get back on track but just, congratulations dude that's really cool um, I know you and Gabby are going to be super fucking great. That's going to be fun. Um, now, back into wrestling. I know the answer to this, but I want you to tell everyone at home because I think it's relevant for people to get to know you. Yes. What are some of your influences for your wrestling style? Like, Where do you go to for your wrestling style? Um, I, I mean, number one, Chris Hero, obviously. Everybody knows. Everybody yeah. that's talked to me, I talk about Chris Hero and how much of a mark I am for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, just the plethora of styles and moves and stuff that this guy can do in the different phases of his career that he's gone through and the changes that he's made. It's just been amazing to watch as a fan. And uh, yeah, technically he's just so sound and so great. And I like uh, his brain goes other other places like that other people don't really think about. Like I've talked to somebody about it before who said, yeah, I had a seminar with Chris Hero and like some of the things how he got from A to Z was just like completely unorthodox, but so right and so good. And like Mm -hmm. that's something that I feel like is uh, is very important when it comes down to, you know, obviously being technically sound. You want to make sure that you can get there in a billion different ways. And that guy 100 percent can. 100 percent. Uh, like character stuff, uh, obviously very influenced by the Hurricane yeah. <laughs> and Nova from ECW, um, and uh, actually Santino too. The the Santino stuff during the mid two thousands was so great, so especially good. the Hunkometer stuff with the <laughs> Continental Championship. Dude, I forgot all about that. Oh my god! Yeah, so I don't know. I I. In, in no way on the technical level of like a Chris Hero or a Daniel Bryan, another one of my favorites. So I try to stay more to the realm of like uh, Santino Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I try to cool. dabble but, in everything. I try can, to try everything. You can't knock what you do though. Like again, a lot. Like this is the one thing I can say. And like it's not even because you're here. I've told, dude, I'll put you over to anybody ever, anytime, with any day. And I've said to anybody show me one bad Dick Lane match. And I mean that. And I don't, and like, I'm not saying they're all, you know, five star freaking spectacles, but like I have honest to God, not seen a bad Dick Lane match because what you do is so sound for who you are. And you've completely refined yourself to the point where you know who Dick Lane is. So you can go out there with anybody and have a Dick Lane match. You know what I mean? And like, that's, yeah. that's relevant because that shows that a, you're comfortable in your skin. That shows that B, it doesn't matter if they're comfortable in their skin or not. You can bring them with you, and that makes you a general in your own right. So I think uh, you might not be as sound as Chris Hero, 
but you're definitely, you know, you have your own technical to you that you probably don't realize you have something going on for yourself too. I appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> um, you know, you're talking about all these guys who influenced you. Have you ever had a chance to get into the ring with anyone who's been, even if it's a local guy who's like been like, okay, I really wanted this match. You know, like this is something that like I've wanted to prove myself or anything like that. Um, my, so as soon as I got to RWA, I could see guy. I saw guys like Mike Montero and yep. Chris Cruz and Devin Blaze. And I was just like, damn, I would watch their matches and I would be like, I don't know how to get to that point, but I need to get to that point. I need to be able to hang with these guys. I need to be able to wrestle with these guys. And that was a big motivating thing for me. And uh, I went on to, I've, I've wrestled Montero a bunch of times now. Yeah. Um, but when I first started, that was kind of like my own measuring stick that I had set for myself to be able to hang with those guys. Absolutely. And I haven't been able to. So it's been great. Yeah. Uh, I mean if you're going to talk workhorses, those are definitely three workhorses. So yeah, that's a fair, fair, fair way to go about it for sure. Um, another guy was Johnny Cockstrong. Oh yeah, he, that's right. Yeah. He, uh, oh, yeah. He, he sort of invented my invisible choke slam gimmick. Well, he's the person I saw do it. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have like a match where it was kind of the force choke slam versus the force choke slam was super cool yeah that was really cool to see i remember i remember uh when that got announced and i was just thinking to myself like man dick lane must be over the fucking moon right now because i remember you talking about how when i first i remember one time asking you when i first started i was like oh where'd you get the four strokes like that's pretty cool like, and you told me johnny cockstrong and then i was like oh yeah i've seen that video but i never thought that he was a a local guy i know he's not local local but like i didn't know he was like an indie guy still doing his thing so when I saw that match on the card, I'm pretty sure that was the same one with um, when I had Oleg as well. I think it was like that little, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And like that was just, I remember that being so, such a big deal for you. And I was like, man, he's going to, he's going to love every second of this. Like seriously. Um, yeah, he was, he was such a great guy too. I, uh, I wasn't sure if he would be sour about me kind of stealing his thing. Yeah. But but I, when I talked to him, he was like, oh, man, don't worry about it. I took it from this guy in Japan or whatever. Like, so he didn't, he was cool about it. That's really cool, man. Yeah, actually, I remember he was a, re he was a really nice guy in the locker room. Really respectful, really humble dude. Johnny Cox, Ron was great. Um, now, you know, you've obviously had your chance to wrestle some of these guys now. You've, you know, looked up to in a sense, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. What about some people? Are there, is there anyone on your list that you haven't had a chance to wrestle yet that you're like, I just need to go, I need to wrestle them? um osiris i have known osiris my entire career <laughs> wrestling like i've known osiris for seven years or something and i haven't been able to i just never was booked against them and wow. we've wrestled at several different promotions together oh, yeah, you guys have been on a lot of the same promotions 100 yeah. percent. um so he's definitely up there um who else uh yeah, I mean, I want to work uh, kind of the more sillier guys that are that are out there now, making a name for themselves, like the Dan Housens and the yeah. more silly guys like that. Um, well, I'm just saying, a Dick Lane versus Dan Housen match would be absolute money. People, <laughs> people don't even know it because, again, you like to say you stay in your own backyard. I swear, like I've, we've had this conversation, man. If you, I, I just want you to jump in a car with me, whether you like it or not. Just get in a car with me. Do a little trip around so people get to see your face and know you a little more. And I guarantee it's just a matter of time before Dick Lane's like, oh, look at that. He's like a little, little indie, indie sweetheart over here. Look at this going on. <laughs> so, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you like you, like I said, man, I, you've always been one of those guys I just I want to see succeed because A, you are a good dude, and B, your work shows that you are also good at what you do. So, but man, oh, dude, you and Dan Housen would be really fucking cool. Like I'm, I'm picturing, I'm picturing like a force, a force spot with like him holding the teeth, and you're just swapping the teeth, and like, oh, anyway. Oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, man. Uh, so you are, you've been working for a lot of local promotions, obviously. Um, you have a couple titles too, and I'm pretty sure you took one off me. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's uh, talk about that, shall we? Um, Providence Wrestle Party is uh probably my favorite, one of my favorite promotions, I should say, that I've ever worked for. Uh such a unique place and by the insane mind of freaking sully banger um what do you 
how do you feel about Providence Wrestle Party first and foremost? It, it it like like you, it is one of my favorite promotions to work for, just because of all the wacky gimmicks and all the crazy stuff combined with all these great workers that he's bringing in at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a great it's a perfect combination of like the silly stuff that I love and the serious stuff that I love. So no, absolutely. Do you have a favorite match that you came from out of there? And no hurt feelings if it's not me. I really just want to know. I you're... did really love our match because it was yeah. one of the like uh, more serious <clears throat> bangers I've had. Period. Oh yeah, uh, no, we, we went we went hard on that match, hundred percent, hundred percent. So much fun. But but my favorite would have to be uh, when I was the wizard in the Dungeons and Dragons match. That's right. Uh, That's right. Crops. I forgot about that. Jesus Christ. Is that when you threw is that when you had the wand that had like all the confetti and everything like that that came yeah. out? That yeah. was so good. Anyone watching this right now who doesn't know Dick Lane or Providence Wrestle Party, please do yourself a favor. Look up Providence Wrestle Party because it's just man, it's out of this world, like in the sense of like think like uh how Kaiju Big Battle is kind of its own thing. Providence Wrestle Party is also its own thing. And you'll know exactly why when you start watching it. Um, For instance, one of my favorite things that's ever happened at any show um, was the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure matches. Um, So, so, Yeah, that's what I'm I'm talking about. That's That's what I thought. 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 So they have these things uh, that that decided, let's just do this. It's a Choose Your Own Adventure match. Like you've ever read those books that you go, oh, if you want to make this option, turn to page, whatever. Or you can turn to this page. It's literally a match that starts off normal and then there'll be a pause and there'll be a narrator over the loudspeaker saying, if you'd like to see Dick Lane use a fireball, scream one, you know? And it's just like, it was literally like that, man. And like, there's, it's so good and so creative too. Uh, It's just one of those places you gotta, you gotta like watch and you gotta go to, or even just see live just to, to feel what it is. Um, Man, yes, I love that and, place. And calling those matches as a wrestler is also super interesting as well. Because you have to have two different routes. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I mean, so the way that I the way that I did it was I would give have the two options, but have both options lead to the like the same result, so we yeah. wouldn't have to call like two separate matches. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. no, that makes sense. <laughs> um, there was also I, I know you know all about this, but like the uh, this was a. Very odd one. Um, for anyone who knows New England Hall of Famer Bo Douglas, uh, you know, Bo knows, he was a part of Providence Wrestle Party, still is, but, you know, very on and off because he kind of has his moments where he's booked and not. Um, there was a match called a Don't Wake Daddy match. And uh, this man, yeah. So this man uh, came out in pajamas and laid down in the middle of the ring with a blanket and a pillow. And the whole point was to, as wrestlers, he wasn't even a, he wasn't even a competitor. You don't wake him up as wrestlers. <laughs> So, like, I mean, you use your imagination there, but that's the idea. And obviously, you know, sooner or later, the heel woke up, woke him up. He does his own little comeback of sorts. But man, it's just again so good. I could say so many good things about that place. And just the people, the people that he books are all great people. Like, there's just a generally good feel in that locker room and in that just that promotion. So, also, but, also the fans are like not wrestling fans. No, uh, not. Th- there's a freaking live band playing the entrance oh, yeah. to everybody. Yep. Yeah. The live band plays everyone out. They'll even like, you know, depending on how big of a move it is, they'll fucking have like someone hitting the snare or the symbols, like on a big move. Like, and mm-hmm. like the fans aren't wrestling fans. They're just drinking beer and enjoying a show. And it like, they, they pop off a hip toss. You know what I mean? For anyone out there who's a wrestling fan, you're not going to pop off a hip toss. You've seen a billion of them. These people, it's like it's like they're we're reinventing the wheel every time we go out, and it's amazing. So you know that obviously helps the overall morale of the locker room. And they're like, you hear that? They just pop for a suplex. Like it's like yeah, that's yeah. great, you know. Um, <clears throat> but listen, well, I got a couple more questions for you. I'm not going to stick too long here. Now, besides Providence Wrestle Party, can you tell me maybe one of your favorite, maybe one or two, one or two of your favorite matches you've ever had with someone? generally locally i want to know about your uh you know kind of like what you, what you put your measuring stick up to here um hmm. um in the rwa um before the pandemic and before we lost the building uh i had been you know slowly being kind of pushed up the card uh year after year yep um and then finally this past year i had 
some more serious matches that were less gimmick based, less of the goofy stuff. Um, and I had uh, like what I thought was a perfect match against Harry Brooks, who was a young trainee. Wow, uh, really? Under Brickhouse, yeah. It was nope. like, I don't know, just the match went perfectly. Uh, there was, uh, I called all types of cool high spots and actual wrestling spots. Yeah. Uh, so I was, I was just proud of myself for coming up with the match and uh, proud of Harry Brooks for hanging with me and doing all these cool things. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. That one. Well, Harry Brooks, Harry Brooks has always been a really nice kid. I like him a lot, actually. Um, always, again, another another humble, respectful young dude. And that goes a long way. That a, a lot of people know that. But the people who don't, goes a long way, especially if you're starting up. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So I have one last question for you, Dick Lane. Yeah. One last one. If you had to tell anybody, because you've been, you've been wrestling for quite some time. So if you had to tell anyone coming in, into the business – some really good positive advice just to help them get through what would it be um i guess um wrestle for yourself don't wrestle for anybody else uh do what you think is cool become the type of wrestler that you would like to watch be a, f a fan of yourself don't be too much of a fan of yourself but be a fan of yourself uh, and treat everybody around you with respect. I love it. Well, everybody, Dick Lane, why don't you do me one last favor? You want to plug any socials? Tell anybody, maybe uh, show your registry. I don't mind. Like, tell everyone what you're <laughs> doing. Uh, yeah, you can. I'm um, at Insane Dick Lane on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, at, I mean, slash Insane D Lane on Facebook. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much going on right now. I've been trying to come up with cool computer projects like you've got going on right here. Uh, so I'll come up with something. Maybe the wackest players in the game. You really <laughs> should bring that back. <laughs> like I'm just saying, you, that was that was money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, first things first, Dick Lane. Again, thank you for being on here. I really appreciate your friendship. I appreciate your professionalism every time. You've always been a really good dude, and um, I've always got your back when it's needed. So. Um, but everybody else, thank you very much for listening. I am Stephen Baker. That was Dick Lane. And, uh, oh, I got to go that way. And uh, stay positive. Yeah.